Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's June 9th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. And very quickly, for those monitoring the situation in regards to the Canadian wildfires and the subsequent smoke being released across the northern United States, as of this recording, the National Weather Service has not yet issued an air advisory warning. So do be aware of that. However, we certainly advise you continue to monitor the situation in your local area and act accordingly. But some big news coming out of California as this past week Energia announced it will provide technologies that will enable Monterey One Water, the wastewater utility of northern Monterey County, California, to make renewable energy from food waste as well as wastewater. The project will significantly expand anaerobic digestion capacity at Monterey One's Water Regional Treatment Plant in Marina, California, and provide organic waste receiving and pre-processing equipment. This will allow the utility to receive and co-digest food waste in existing digesters currently used to process wastewater biosolids. When anaerobically digested, the waste produces renewable biogas, which is then used to generate electricity and heat at the Monterey One plant. The project will increase biogas production from the plant's four digesters by more than 150%, which will be used to make up 1.6 megawatts of renewable electricity via on-site combined heat and power engines. The increased energy production will provide more than 100% of the plant's power needs, significantly reducing operating costs, supporting revenue generation, and increasing resiliency and reliability. Andrew Benedek, chairman and CEO of Energia, said, quote, By upgrading its infrastructure to enable co-digestion of food waste along with its wastewater, Monterey One Water will now not only recycle water, it will also recycle organic waste that would have otherwise created methane emissions in landfills. This turns a big problem into a huge benefit and ultimately is what will make a net zero future possible for planet Earth. End quote. And speaking of California, local company Clean Energy Fuels Corporation, the largest provider of clean and renewable fuel for the U.S. transportation market, announced a ton of new deals with several well-known consumer brands as well as some of the nation's largest and most environmentally conscious transit agencies. Undoubtedly, one of the biggest among the new deals is with Liberty Coca-Cola one of the country's largest bottlers and distributors of Coke, as well as other brands. The company signed a fueling contract with Clean Energy to power trucks in New York and Philadelphia with renewable natural gas. These are its first trucks to operate on RNG, a sustainable fuel made from organic waste that significantly reduces carbon emissions by an average of 300% versus diesel. Stanley Walker, a distribution manager for Liberty Coca-Cola, said, quote, Liberty strives to be the best corporate citizen we can be in the communities where we do business, and having a cleaner operating and more sustainable fleet with RNG is a good way to do that. RNG reduces carbon emissions and improves air quality easy and cost-effectively, end quote. In addition to Liberty Coca-Cola, Clean Energy Fuels Corp. also signed new deals with Electrolux, the Big Blue Bus in Santa Monica, California, the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority, the City of Tucson, Valley Regional Transit in Boise, Idaho, and others. Now moving out to Virginia, Clean Vision Corps has entered into a memorandum of agreement with the West Virginia Department of Economic Development to establish a new $50 million manufacturing facility in West Virginia. The facility, operated by Clean Seas, a subsidiary of Clean Vision, will be located in Quincy and will focus on converting plastic feedstock into precursors for recycled content plastics and clean fuels, such as hydrogen, according to a news release issued Wednesday by Governor Jim Justice's office. 
According to the company's website, Clean Vision Core identifies and acquires companies and technologies that will have an effect on the green economy, saying, quote, the company supports these green economy ventures with the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and generating positive returns for its shareholders, end quote. Clean Seas says it's focused on developing profitable plastic recycling technologies, improving the financial status of its host economies, reducing plastic waste in the world's oceans, and creating substantial rates of returns to investors. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Connecticut is currently positioned to pass the country's first higher extended producer responsibility bill. They've become the first state to pass an EPR for tires bill in both chambers with the bill HB 6486 expected to be signed into law by Governor Ned Lamont. The bill requires tire manufacturers to finance, operate, and report on the post-consumer management of their products. The bill will decrease illegal dumping, better protect consumers, and boost tire recycling rates across the state. Once signed, the law is expected to increase the retreading and recycling of a significant number of the roughly 3.1 million scrap tires generated annually in the state. About 75% of these had been burned as tire-derived fuel until the incineration plant in Sterling, Connecticut closed June 2014. Now there are fewer outlets for retread, recycling, or beneficial use of scrap tires across the state with a resulting increase in illegally dumping tires. The new law will be the sixth EPR law in Connecticut and marks the third time the state has led the nation with a first producer EPR bill. The other two being mattresses, an EPR bill passed in 2013, and for gas cylinders, an EPR bill passed for them in 2022. Now in Tennessee, Nashville has proposed a new ordinance to manage some of the new waste being generated from the explosive growth of its commercial building sector. Construction and demolition waste across the city is skyrocketing, with city officials estimating that CND waste stream has doubled in the past decade, with the vast majority of it ending up in landfills. Jen Harmon, manager of Nashville's Zero Waste Program, said, quote, We're generating more and more of this material. We're really not recycling much of it, end quote. The proposal applies only to commercial construction and demolition projects and excludes single-family homes or townhomes with four or fewer units. The commercial sector can easily meet the proposed requirements, according to Sonia Allman, spokesperson for Metro Water Services, and planners think this legislation will incentivize investment in local recycling and recovery options. For demolitions, the plan first targets metal and concrete along with carpet, asphalt shingles, and bricks. Construction projects will have to recycle cardboard, metal, concrete, and quote-unquote land-clearing debris. Recycling construction and demolition materials can conserve landfill space, reduce transportation and disposal costs, and offset the environmental impact associated with the extraction and consumption of virgin resources. And lastly, the Mahoning County Solid Waste District in Ohio, better known as the Green Team, has joined with the state's Environmental Protection Agency and Recycling Partnership to help bring an educational outreach recycling program to Mahoning County. The county drop-off recycling program will be able to provide educational outreach, engage with patrons at drop-off recycling sites, and make infrastructure improvements to help patrons better understand the program and items that can and cannot be recycled. The program came to fruition from a $75,500 cash grant, and the Mahoning County Board of Commissioners is contributing over $40,000 in matching funds to help amplify the impact of the program. But that has been your Recyclist News Update for June 9th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. 
I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you and have a great weekend.